um, bodies of government about the federal hiring process and they should get rid of KSAs and no, they shouldn't get rid of KSAs. And then they said, well, they're going to get rid of them all together and they're going to use these, these questionnaires instead. And I'm thinking we don't want to go toward the questionnaire. Then um, the latest thing I had heard was they were going to get rid of both and just use the resume. Well, just imagine how much more they would want in your resume at that point. So uh, I, I guess my point is, that, you know, the, the process really isn't that bad <laughs> for as, as complex a, as it is at this point. And then on top of that, they have, you know, the required documents to send, who, who to send it to, and all that good stuff. So. I just wanted to share that with you and take a look at some other KSAs. And then uh, we will be able to wrap up after that. Again, emphasizing the point of uh, KSAs really being uh, part interview. So if one of the KSAs says something like ability to communicate in writing, what they're really asking you is, you know, what have you written? in your work or school experience. So a picture, instead of just picturing this statement when you're reading a vacancy announcement that says ability to communicate in writing, hmm. think of someone in an interview situation asking you, so what have you written in your, your work or school experience? Do you regularly provide any kind of written updates, reports, briefs? Do you write any, any types of uh, regulations, grants, policies, memos, proposals? performance evaluations, audits, how complex is that information you're writing about? Who do you communicate with? Are the employees at higher levels? Are they lower levels? Is, is it you know, highly technical information that you then have to relate to non-technical people? So it really is kind of that. So what I've done, too, for a lot of the more general KSA statements like that, I have a set of questions that go with them that really helps you um, start to flush out those KSAs to write those. So same thing, um, this just follows up with that ability to, to communicate in writing. And another way it could be posed in an application could be, you know, in the text box below, please elaborate on your answer to the previous question. So the previous question could have said, you know, do you communicate in writing on a regular basis, blah, 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 blah. And they want you to prove that up in your, in your, your KSA statement in your essay. And they want you to also identify where you did that in your resume. So here's an example statement that um, for that ability to communicate in writing. And it's not necessarily the way that yours would be, because this is for a specific type of position with very specific uh, examples, but as part of daily responsibilities, I provide information and briefings on HR issues, blah, 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 um, Office of Personnel Management, careful writer. Different examples are given here for when and how those are provided. Examples, written materials, emails, memoranda, correspondence, and so on. So that's just really part of writing that KSA, but we use a format called a CCAR format where you really break down into what the context was, what the challenge was, what your action was, um, you know, how you solved the problem, and what the result was, and you know, what was the feedback that you got in doing so. So that leads me to, I know I said five, but I had to put six, which is the one big difference between you and 99% of other applicants, and really the one thing that I started doing with clients that really helped them to leap ahead was we started putting together a federal job search plan of action. And that plan of action really determined what jobs they were going to go after, how they were going to pursue those uh, based on the demand for those positions, the challenge in getting them, the amount of competition for those, and so on. And, and their skill level as well. And in some cases, it may mean you may have to uh, get some additional skills and things. I can show you some avenues for that because the government provides ways to do that as well. So that is pretty much the five critical keys covered with uh, kind of an extra sixth one. And again, I want to remind you that you can take advantage of a great opportunity to move forward in your federal job search 
at landatfederaljob.com. And even if you can't attend the course live, it's worth it to sign up, take the course at your convenience, get your bonuses, and get access to the materials. You have them. You can do it in the privacy and the comfort of your home at your convenience and land that federal job. So with that, I want to encourage and thank those who have already signed up for the course. And for those who haven't, I want to encourage you to do so, to make that investment in yourself and win in 2010. And for all of you on the call, I wish you the absolute best in your, in your job search and in your career. And please do let me know if there is anything that I can do to further assist you in that. I look forward to speaking with you again. And I am signing off. I'm Dr. Daphne Houston of LandThatFederalJob.com. Thanks for attending. <laughs>